Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. As a quick reminder, if you enjoy my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would mean the world to me because I'm currently trying to make this my full-time occupation. And today we have a super special deck deck for you. This is probably my favorite deck in the whole of Commander. It's one of the most unique commanders out there. I absolutely love him. It is Norin the Wary. And the reason I love him so much is because when people first see him, if they've never played against this deck, they are completely completely confused. They're like, what on earth is this doing? This card is awful. So if you don't know what Norin does, he basically exiles himself whenever anybody attacks or anybody plays any card. That includes yourself. And then he returns himself to the battlefield at the beginning of the end step. So he just freaks out. He gets scared whenever anything happens, but he's always going to come back. This has a few implications. It means Norin is surprisingly durable. He can't really die to most stuff because he's just going to disappear in response. He survives board wipes. He survives spot removals. The only thing that can kind of kill him are activated abilities, which makes him really Really resilient. He's going to keep doing his thing turn after turn after turn. The main way we're going to abuse that in this deck is with enter the battlefield abilities or triggers that happen when a creature enters the battlefield. That's going to end up happening a lot in this deck and it's just so fun and so outside the box so I can't wait to share this list with you guys. And we're starting off with Ardent Elementalist. This is a new addition from Midnight Hunt. It's really good. It's better even I would say than Archaeomancer in blue because it's less mana intensive and has an arguably better stat line. But anyway this is going to help us return instance or sorceries from our graveyard. Great card. Beetleback Chief is going to help with all of the triggers we have when a creature enters the battlefield by providing three bodies for one. It's extremely efficient. Embermore Helion is going to increase all of our damaging effects from our red cards by one point of damage. That's basically the entire deck. And we have so many things that ping for one that this essentially doubles them. Goblin Assassin is excellent in this deck. It's pretty fun. We have a bunch of goblins and whenever any of them comes into play, each player is going to flip a coin and whoever loses a flip is going to sacrifice a creature. Yes. Yes, this can affect us, but we have so many 1-1s and tokens that we don't really care that much. This can do some serious damage to our opponents. Goblin Rabble Master is awesome in this deck. If anybody stumbles, this can quickly put them out of the game, and it's also going to keep providing more and more tokens to trigger all of our abilities. Goblin Welder is one of the ways we have a little bit of recursion in the deck. We're going to have quite a few artifacts, as you'll see. We can sacrifice them with this to then bring back better artifacts from the graveyard. This allows us to get up to some shenanigans, and this is also a goblin, which is kind of relevant in this deck. Iron Mirror is just a nice piece of magic. Mana ramp. Null Spine Dragon is a really good one to follow up after a big turn. We can just refill our hand. That's one of the things that Mono Red traditionally struggles with, running out of cards. So this is one of the best ways to refill our hand. And we can also do it even if we haven't attacked or we haven't been able to get a good attack in because we have so many ways to deal direct damage. Franco Tin Street Kingpin is another way to make multiple tokens every turn. We do have to find a good attack, but that should be uh, easy to do. And even if we don't, if we still sacrifice him, we're still getting two goblins out of it. So it's basically at worst going to be like Beetle Bat Chief as long as we get one attack in. Legion War Boss is similarly another card that makes tokens and is going to trigger all of our effects. Mind Claw Shaman is one that I really like. It's just going to come in and we're going to look at an opponent's hand and get an instant or sorcery from there. That can be pretty good. We can hit some interesting stuff out of this. It adds a little bit of chaos to the game and I think it's super fun. Mog War Marshal is basically the same as Beetleback Chief but for only two mana. So if you just let it die to its echo cost, you're getting three bodies over two turns. That's really good for two mana. Near Battlesphere is going to come in, make five bodies, and trigger all of our abilities that trigger on creatures entering the battlefield five times. That's incredibly strong, and it can also be a legitimate threat in its own right. Pashlegmons is there to sacrifice our little goblins. It's going to double the goblins when we sacrifice it, so it works really well with the cards that want creatures to die and the cards that want creatures to enter the battlefield, which is a big segment of this deck. Perforos God of the Forge is one of our payoff cards, one of the best ones actually. It's hard to remove because it's indestructible and it's going to deal two damage to each opponent every time any creature comes into play. With Norin in play, that means every turn cycle we're probably going to be dealing eight damage to all of our opponents. That's going to end the game so fast, although it will make you a threat, so make sure you have something explosive to go with it. Quicksmith Genius is going to let us get some card quality. It is possible that we run out of cards and the, or that we flood later on in the game. With this in play, we can always ensure that we're getting good cards and a steady stream of cards flowing. Reinforced Ronin works very well with Quicksmith Genius because it's an artifact and also Ronin is an anagram for Norin, so that's pretty cool. Joking aside, this card's pretty sweet. Uh, if we have the mana, we can just keep recasting it to get a guaranteed ETB trigger every turn. We can also just discard it to draw a card if we need to draw cards, so it's super flexible and it comes down really early. I really like it in this deck. Rose Room Treasurer is another one of our great payoff cards for creatures entering the battlefield. It's going to make four more treasures per turn cycle with Norin, guaranteed. That's amazing, and anything we play on top of that is just more treasures. This is an all-star in this deck. Siege Gang Commander 
that is again four bodies for the price of one. You can't really beat that for rate. And then we can also sacrifice all these goblins we're going to have lying around to deal two damage to anything. This is again a really good card in the deck. Solemn is a nice little bit of ramp and value. Torbran is going to work so well with Norrin and with all these other cards that ping people because it's going to increase all of that damage by two. Having this out with Porphyros just feels disgusting. Without anything else, we're dealing four damage on everybody's turn with Norrin. That's really, really good. The Ashino Heretic is a good way to deal with artifacts, and it also deals some damage straight to the face, which we always want in this deck. And Witchy Roastmaster is a new addition from Streets of Neon Capenna. This is pretty good as another Porphyros effect. It's not indestructible and it only deals one damage, but not everything can be Porphyros. Cloudstone Curio is a great card to rebuy abilities from our creatures because we can return some of them to hand when another one comes into play. It works really well with a lot of cards in the deck. However, it is not essential and it is very expensive, so you can feel free to substitute it for anything else that deals direct damage or anything that triggers on creatures entering or attacking, anything like that. Conjurer's Closet is going to let us rebuy those Enter the Battlefield abilities for more value whenever we need to. Endless Atlas is a great way to make sure we don't run out of cards. Genesis Chamber is one of the all-stars of the deck. Yes, our opponents are also going to get creature tokens whenever a creature comes into play under their control, but we're going to be doing it so much more, and Norin is going to come into play every turn, so that's a guaranteed, again, four one ones per turn cycle, which is pretty awesome. Honor Worn Shaku works really well with Norin because we're going to be able to tap him before he freaks out and disappears, and that means that it's basically going to tap for two mana every time. That's a pretty solid card. Panharmonicon is going to double all of our Enter the Battlefield abilities, which in this deck, as you've seen, are quite a few. It's also going to mean that all of those triggers from Perforos and Witty Roastmaster are going to happen twice. It's just very, very strong in this deck. Relic of Legends is another amazing card. It's basically like Honor Worn Shaku, but we have some other legendaries in the deck too, which we can also tap to activate this. So this is going to tap for at least two mana every time. Very good. It's also worth mentioning that since Norin disappears and reappears every turn, we can use this four times during this turn cycle. So it's pretty good if we're doing stuff during our opponent's turn. Ruby Medallion is gonna make all of our red cards cheaper. Not much to say there. Skull Clump's really good for refilling on cards. We have a lot of tokens, and this is going to draw us an absolute ton of cards. Pretty essential in a mono red deck like this that doesn't really have that many ways to get cards. Smuggler's Copter works really well with Norin because he's going to disappear anyway. You might as well tap him to crew this. And then when we do, we're going to get to filter cards, which is something, again, that this deck really needs. So it's a very, very good card in the deck. Springleaf Drum is going to let us tap Norin to add a mana for one mana. That is amazing. And since we can always guarantee that we're going to have Norin on turn one, this this is basically a one mana mana rock in this deck, which is fantastic. This is basically the perfect deck for Tome of Legends. In this deck, we're basically going to be getting a counter on it every single turn of the game. So it means we're never gonna run out of counters and we're just going to be able to draw a card for one mana each time. That is really good and make sure we don't run out of cards. And moving on to the enchantments, we have one of the all-stars of the deck, which is Confusion in the ranks. Basically, whenever something comes into play, we're going to swap it with somebody else's thing. This happens for all players. So for example, if a creature comes in into my control, I swap it with somebody else's creature. However, with Norin, it works super well because when he blinks and exiles himself, he's gonna come back under your control. So that means you're basically never gonna lose control of him and you're gonna keep swapping him for the best things your opponents control. As soon as your opponents figure out what this does in this deck, they are going to be destroying it, so be warned. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is just a really good card in any deck, but it's particularly good here since all of the modes work really well with what we want to do. The creatures it creates are even both goblins, so that's even more synergy. And we also have a lot of ETBs, which means that eventually the reflection of Kiki Jiki is going to be able to go nuts by making copies of things. Goblin Assault is a great one for generating goblin tokens. It is a little bit awkward that it makes our goblins attack, but hey, goblins like to do that, so just deal with it. Guild Arts is going to work very well with Norin. It's a little bit awkward that you're not going to get to use it the first turn you play it, but after that you're basically getting two treasure tokens, and you don't even need to risk Norin because he's going to exile himself after he attacks. So it's fantastic in the deck. Impact Tremors is another way to deal damage to everyone whenever a creature comes into play. All of our creatures are small anyway, so it isn't even that bad that it only does one damage. It's basically a third effect like Witty Roastmaster and Perforos. Outpost Siege is very good by offering us two modes that are both good in the deck. We can either get a card advantage mode that makes sure we don't run out of gas, or we can get a finisher mode that's going to let us ping anything when our stuff dies. Both of those are effects we're very interested in. Pandemonium is another effect that's going to let us deal damage when stuff comes into play. It does let our opponents do it too so it is a little bit awkward that they can kill our stuff with these triggers but then again our deck is built around this effect so we're probably going to come out ahead anyway 
Planet Chaos is one that offers a little bit of protection to the deck. It's a little bit awkward because it kind of makes things into this weird stalemate. But it can be really annoying for our opponents and it can definitely stop combo players from going off by preventing them from doing things. Tavern Brawler is another amazing new addition from Baldur's Gate. It's going to make Norin really big, but then he's not going to be able to attack anyway, so we don't really care about that. But it is basically guaranteed card advantage turn after turn after turn since they can't really remove Norin. So it's really, really good. Underworld Breach is a good way to finish the game or to have a really big turn late in the game when we're running low on resources. Vicious Shadows is another good finisher because anytime any of your creatures dies, our opponent's gonna take damage equal to the number of cards in their hand. Against players with four grips, this is gonna deal so much damage. And it's not even our own creatures dying, it's any creature dying, so it's really, really strong. And then Warstorm Surge is a better version of Pandemonium in this deck because it doesn't let our opponents deal damage, only us. For Sorceries, we have Blasphemous Act as a board wipe. We have Burn Down the House, which is also a board wipe, but it can double up as creature token generation, which we need. Cathartic Reunion is going to let us draw some cards. So is Faithless Looting. And the same for Reforge the Soul, which is also going to mess with our opponent's hands as a bonus. And then we have Bandle Blast for dealing with all of those pesky artifacts that our opponents might play. For instance, we have Big Score to draw some more cards and Rampus. Chaos Warp as a nice bit of catch or removal. Star Storm, which is a board wipe that we can cast at instant speed. That's pretty strong and it can also trigger all of our die effects. And Tibol's Trickery for a little bit of interaction or to stop people comboing off or going infinite. And then for Planeswalkers we have Duretti, Scrap Savant, which is going to do many things that the deck wants. It's going to draw cards and filter cards for us. It's going to return artifacts from the graveyard to the battlefield. And if we ever get to the ultimate, it's going to be really good for looping artifacts. And then finally we're going to move on to lands. We have Gaia Reach, Sanitarium, and Mikokoro. Both are very good for drawing cards. War Room is also in the deck as a way to refill our hands and draw cards. Wasteland is going to let us deal with problem lands that our opponents might play. Kirkkeep is an all-star in the deck by letting us make tokens that are going to trigger all of our ETB effects. Scavenger Grounds is a way for us to be able to interact with opponents' graveyards. Sakenzin is another great way to get two bodies on a land. It's really fantastic in this deck. And Valakut the Molten Pinnacle is a way for us to deal damage late game when we start to get extra mountains. It means that all of our top decks become better. And that is why we're not running some other token generating lands such as Dwarven Mine or Springjack Pasture because we need to keep our mountain count high. Anyway, there you have it. That is probably my favorite commander in the whole of the format. I hope you enjoyed this deck tag. Please let me know in the comment section below if there's anything you would change. I read all your comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. And until next time, take care.